give God a hand of praise. Come on, give God a hand of praise. We want to thank God for the, uh, the women's ministry, the senior women of Mount Calvary, for leading us in our devotion. And we thank God for this day. It is a day that the Lord has made, and we ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. I guess y'all won't let me stop. So Sharon and Catherine back there still clapping. So come on, y'all. Come on. Some of y'all haven't clapped all morning. Come on. his holy name. Bless his holy name. Amen. All right, now y'all stop now. Amen. To God be the praise. We thank God for this day. This is the day that the Lord has made and we ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, do yourself a favor. Shake hands with the person next to you. Maybe some of you don't know. Maybe some of you came with. Just tell them, hello, good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. Hallelujah. What's up, man? Sleepy or something? God has brought us from a mighty long way. Some of it he brought over the hills of Reno and back down to the, to the valley and enjoyed some ribs and stuff. Amen. He getting it. Some of it.
know that God has brought us and kept us even when we couldn't keep ourselves. And we've been burdened and we've been heavy laden, but God knows how to relieve us from all of our struggles, all of those things that have us down. And when he does, it ought to make us feel a little bit better. Can I get a witness here? I said it ought to make us feel a little bit better. Can I get a witness here? Well, I feel so much better. Yeah, since I laid, I, I feel better, so much better, since I laid, well, and I'm going one of these days I'm going home to Jesus. Yeah. Since I, Since I lay. I yeah. One of these days he's coming back for me and I'm going. I'm going home to live with Jesus. Yeah. But I laid them down. Many disappointments. But I laid them down. I took them to the altar and laid them at the feet of Jesus. And he can handle all my burdens. And he can handle all my problems. Yeah. I laid him, I laid him, I laid him, all of my troubles, I laid him, all of my burdens, I laid him, I laid him at the altar, and he handled them, I laid him at the altar, and it fixed them, I laid him at his feet, and he handled them, I laid him, yeah. I laid him down, I laid him down, I laid him down, will you lay them, will you lay them down, all of your issues, you lay them down, lay them at the feet of Jesus, and he can handle it, lay them at the feet of Jesus, he can solve it, lay them at the feet of Jesus, he can fix it, lay them at the feet of Jesus, yeah. I'm going home to. I'm going home to. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Does anybody believe God for anything? That'll open a door for you? That'll make a way for you? That'll move some troubles out of your way? Why don't you stand to your feet and clap your hands with them if you believe God? Only if you believe him. It's hard to clap a little bit. Mansion now, oh, I believe, oh, I believe, I believe, oh, I had my mansion now, no, I believe, oh, I believe, just what you said. Come here, little more. How about this one? 
He'll give me all I need. Oh, I believe. Oh, I believe. I believe. Oh, he'll give me everything I need. I believe. I believe.
If you believe her, why don't you clap your hands? Why don't you clap your hands? Why don't you clap your hands? If you believe God, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. How many of you know that the Lord will do just what he said he'll do? Is there any witnesses in here that he will do just what he said? Amen. He said he'll supply my needs, and he did just what he said. He said he'll make a way out of no way, and he did just what he said. He said he'd forgive my sins, and he did just what he said. He said he'd save my soul. And he did just what he said. Anybody been sick and he healed you? He's the Lord that heals us. He'll do just what he said. Did you have some bills that you couldn't pay? And the Lord let some money show up right in the nick of time. I said he'll do just what he said. Can I get a witness here? Oh, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not only will he, but he'll turn stuff around for you, too. You ever, you ever got yourself in a situation you couldn't get out of? The Lord just, in his own way, turned it on around. Because he'll do just what he said. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Some of you are here right here, and right you're here right now because of God's ability just to be faithful in what he said. Amen. That's why the Bible says don't put confidence in people. Because people in their best day can let you down. Someone said, Jesus, he'll never let you down. Because he'll do just what he said. Yeah. Yes, Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. For doing just what you said. He can be trusted. God, in Jesus' name, we're praying for the preaching and teaching power of your Holy Spirit. Move now on us. Touch us. Touch us. Open these lips of clay. Touch this heart that has been marred by time and circumstances, but it is lifted now in humble submission towards you. Speak to our hearts. Speak to us and speak through this vessel. Touch us. Touch us. Fill us. Guide us and direct us to the end that you would be glorified, God. We bless you. Save someone, restore someone, encourage, strengthen someone for your glory. In Jesus' name we do pray. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in your sight. God, you are our strength 
and you are our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Psalm number 40. Psalm number 40. I'm that song just keep ringing in my head. And he'll do just what he said. Some of y'all, you're dealing with what you're dealing with, going through what you're going through. But I'm so glad that he'll do just what he said, you ever had the burdens that you couldn't handle and they were just causing your head to hurt and you couldn't think straight and you finally did what the old folks said, you turned it over to Jesus and quit worrying about it. And he did just what he said. You ever had more month than money? <laughs> God either made some money show up or he just stretched what you already had. And he did just what he said. I remember when I was growing up, you know, I'd mess up and my daddy would just say, man, be honest with me. I've been young. I understand. And I try to lie and get away with it. And every time I'd lie and thought I got away with it, I didn't. I'd get in trouble. And so one day I just tried it. I said, let me go and just be honest with my daddy. I just went on, dad, you know, so-and-so, yeah, I did it. Son, don't do it no more. And, and walked away. <laughs> I was bracing myself for the lick. And it didn't happen. And my dad showed me a picture of what Jesus does when we're honest with him. Just go to him. And I said, now son, don't do that no more. He just clean you all up and brush you all up. And he did just what he said. Hey, hey, hey. And he did just what he promised to be my keeper and he did just what he promised he'd supply all of my needs and he did just what he said hallelujah thank you Lord thank you Lord Thank you, Lord. 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 Psalm 40. Verses 1, I'm going to try to get to verse number 4, uh, verse 3. Psalm 40, is reading in the King James Version, it says, To the chief musician, a psalm of David, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. He hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. And he did just what he said. That's what I'm talking about, y'all. <laughs> and he did just what The confusion and the contention of this text is based upon 
what's the circumstances surrounding this text. The circumstances surrounding this text are not uh, apparent, they're not sure, and so theologians have suggested things, and so since they suggested some, and I'm trying to be a theologian, I can suggest some also. It is possible that David, when writing this text, was considering or thinking about him being chased out of his own kingdom, chased out of his own house by his own son, who decided that he wanted to take over his daddy's position, his daddy's throne as king, and being heartbroken over what had happened with his own son, not the enemy, not those who are on the outside, but those who are part of his own family, his own flesh and blood that turning, and they're not sure, but maybe it was that, and so David says, I waited patiently on the Lord. Or maybe it was because David realized that Saul, Saul, King Saul was trying to kill him because God had anointed David to be king and David hadn't become king yet. And so maybe that was the reason he wrote this text. It's not sure. Or maybe even maybe David had got caught up in a sin circumstance or a sin situation. And now he writes this psalm of honesty. He says, listen here, Lord, I'm going through right now. Whatever he was going through, the good news is that he had sense enough to go down in prayer. Somebody ought to pay attention to that one right there. This not a point, but this good right there. You ought to, when you're going through whatever you're going through, regardless of how you got to where you got to, if it is sovereign, sovereignly directed, if it is satanically uh, devised, or if it is self-inflicted, make sure that somehow or another you find yourself in a position and a posture of prayer. Please remember what the old folks said a long time ago. It's still right, it's still real, and it is still true. Jesus is on the main line. You can call him and tell him what you want. If you want your sins forgiven, you can tell him what you want. If you want your soul converted, you can tell him what you want. If you want your body healed, you can tell him what you want. If you want your tuition paid, you can tell him what you want. If you want your enemy to leave you alone, you can tell him what you want. If you need your cell bill paid, you can tell him what you want. Somebody help me. If your heart is broken and it needs mended, you can tell him what you want. If you need a job, you can tell him what you want. If you are on contract and you want to go permanent, you can tell him what you want. He's still on the main line you can call him and tell him what you want. He will make a way. He has, matter of fact, matter of fact, matter of fact, he says, listen, he says, I waited patiently. That word wait and patiently is actually the same Hebrew word. He says, I waited patiently. Now, some folk wait, but they don't wait patiently. Can I get a witness there? They wait and they're frustrated. They're waiting. They're, 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 they're confused. They're waited. They're waiting. They're depressed. They're wait. They wait and they're, 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 they're stressed out. But he said, I waited patiently on the Lord. And the reason he waits is for two reasons. Number one, because he said, when I cried unto him, uh, he inclined his ear unto me. That's the first point. Listen, when we call on him, this is what he does. He inclines his ear. Now, you know what recline is, right? That's when you sit in the lazy boy and recline but the Bible said that when we go to the Lord he doesn't recline no he, he, he stoops over he bows down and he cups his ear to hear a prayer that could not be heard he gives heed to our prayer he first of all he inclines can I tell y'all something that won't cause you nothing anything that you're concerned about God is concerned about no matter how trivial that you may think it is or how devastating it might be, anything that you are concerned about, God is concerned about. The story of this, uh, these preachers had this conference, and at the end of the conference, they called, came together they, before they went to lunch. They came together, and they asked all the preachers for prayer requests. Some were saying, I'm doing a building project. Uh, uh, pray for me. Some were saying, I'm going through stress at the home. Pray for me. Some were saying, uh, my church is not growing right. Pray for me. And as one preacher said, listen, y'all, y'all y'all just talked about praying. He said, the Lord said, you know, you know anything. He said, this is my, my favorite coat, and I lost my button." And everybody thinking like y'all thinking, I don't know, this dude, talk, we talking about churches and bills, and he talking about a button. 
And so they, they gave her out, and they was praying for it. And, Lord, we pray this pastor, you bless his church to go, and you pray this pastor that you would touch his family, Lord. And we're, pr- well, Lord, we're praying for this pastor who has lost his button. In Jesus' name. And they went out to lunch and came back and went to the table. And where the dude was sitting, his button was sitting right there. And everybody looked. And he looked at the button. He just said, Lord, thank you for my button. <laughs> And I'm here to tell you that if it's sickness, if it's, if it's distress, if it's disease, it's, if it's bereavement, or even if you just lost a button, it doesn't matter. Anything that you're concerned about, God is concerned with because you are his child. You are his son or his daughter. He is our father, and because he is our father, he wants us to come and ask him anything that we want, anything that we desire, anything that we need. He is on the main line. He inclined. The first thing he did is he inclined. And then the second thing he did is he brought us up and he brought us out. Verse 2. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet up on a rock. Now, when you read it in its Hebrew, I believe all of this is really meshed together. Because you would read it, you would think it says, he brought me up out of a horror pit, then he brought me up out of the miry clay, then he set my feet up on a rock. That's how we think. If you were in, anybody ever been fishing, and, and, and when we used to go fishing at and, and Clear Lake, there were some places that Daddy would take us, and they would be on this steep embankment, and we'd have to go down this steep embankment. We could literally slide down the steep embankment to get where the hot spots were. But now going back up the embankment, there was a problem. You'd have, you'd have tackle and, and, and fishing pole and your big hat and hopefully all the fish you done caught and you got to make it up this hill. And you'd be struggling up the hill and you started sliding. You started sliding and you slide until hopefully you found a branch or a rock that you can grip. You, 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 y'all there with me? Y'all there with me? So, so picture a person in a large, deep hole that's muddy and has no bottom. And they're just going down, going down. They got weights on them, and they're just going down further and further. And so they're f- just, ev- they just, I mean, they're trying to get their grip. Everything they step on is slimy. Everything they step on is muddy, and they're going down. But God puts a rock. They hit the rock, and it stabilizes them. Then he puts another rock, and they take another step up. But he puts, y'all, y'all get in the picture, he take, puts another rock, he, put, he, he puts another rock. He, 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 he says, he says, he says, he says, he, 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 even when I'm in a horrible pit, now I've been in a ditch before, you know, riding your bike as kids, you know, we get in a ditch, but that's, I've never been in a pit before. But he said, but, but now, I've never been in a physical pit, but there have been some psychological and mental pits I've been into and didn't know how I was going to get out, didn't know if there was any way out of, and the only thing I could depend on was the word of God and Jesus Christ. And I'm here today as a testimony and a witness that I don't know how he does it, I don't know when and where, I'm just so glad that somehow, even in the midst of that psychological pit that I was in, God established my going, he put a a rock down there so that I can stand on. All right, all right. And he brought me up. Brought me up. Brought me out. And then set my feet. So set my feet. Brought me up. Brought me out. And set my feet. Brought me up. Brought me out. And set my feet. Brought me up. Brought me out. Set my feet. Brought me up. That sounds like mercy and grace to me, really. I'm looking at that. That looks salvific to me, <laughs> you know, because I couldn't save myself, but he brought me up. He brought up my mentality to, to receive him. Then he brought me out. He gave me the mind to receive him, and then he set me up. He brought me up. He brought me out, and he set me up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He brought me up. He brought me out, and then he set me up. He brought me up. He brought me out, and then he set me up. Somebody, you'll get it in a minute. He brought me up. He brought me out. And then he set me up. 
Somebody looking at me right here. You think you're so down. You think you're so down. You, you, there's no further that you, there's no way you can go any further down where well, that's a good place to be. Because I remember Richard Pryor said, which way is up? Can I get a witness? Up? When you've hit rock bottom, thank God there's a rock at the bottom. And now it's time to go up. He will bring you out. Can I get a witness there? He will. He will. He will bring you up. He will bring you out. And then he'll set you up. God ever bring anybody out here before? Anybody ever been in some stuff that you couldn't get out of and folks said you wasn't going to get out? Did God bring you out? Then didn't God set you up? He said, yes, he did. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. How in the world, how in the world could you figure that you was going to be in the right place at the right time so you get in the presence of God and get blessed the way you've been getting blessed? You, you couldn't figure that out. You, you walking down the street, minding your own business, thinking you need a place to stay, and all of a sudden you see the pastor. I need some help. We gonna pray. I need some help. We gonna do. I need some help, and all of a sudden the Lord starts turning things around, turning things around, turning things around, turning things around. Don't you know some of you are blessed just because of who you know? Some, some of you, some of you, some of you, some of you, you doing as well as you are because you hang on somebody else's co coattail. Do you not know that God knows how to bless? He knows how to bless individuals, and then he'll bless individuals so that that blessing can flow down to you too? You'll be blessed just by association. That sometimes you be acting crazy in the car and God will make sure you get to your destination because of the one who's driving, not because of you. You in the house, you ain't doing nothing, you lazy and won't do what you're supposed to do and God will make sure you get fed just because you're in the house. Can I get a witness? Y'all gonna make me work a little bit hard today, so that's all right, that's all right, amen. I I started preaching early, and I thought I was going to be done in about five more minutes, but y'all keep adding more time to the sermon. Thank you so much. God knows how to set you up. And sometimes you're not even looking for the setup. You're looking at yourself saying it can't happen. I know it can't happen. I done messed up too bad. I blew it. It's my fault I'm where I am. And God says because you're my son, because you are my daughter, I can set you up even when you don't know you're being. I can hook you up. Has a favor ever come your way when you wasn't looking for it? Has a blessing ever come your way when you wasn't even expecting it? God knows how to prearrange stuff even before you get there. God knows how to set things in order before you get to where the stuff is set up. All you got to do is just go ahead and walk. And have you ever been walking in the wrong direction and still ended up in the right place? Walking in the wrong direction and somehow God allows you to get in the right place. says, and he established my going. Now, this, that, I got to, oh, man, I want to spend about an hour just on those four words and establish my goings. Um, but give me about two minutes. I'll try to finish it. He established my going. Now, it doesn't say he established his going. It says he established my going. It, it means, it literally means he fixed what I'm trying to do. Now, first of all, we have to remember that it's our responsibility to do his bidding. Sometime, God, he not only establishes his will for us, but sometimes he establishes our will for ourselves. I know I'm in Bible country. Delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. He'll give you the desires of your heart. God, I, I need transportation. A bus pass will do. <laughs> but I want a Lexus. <laughs> Lord, I need a place to lay my head. A one-bedroom shack will do. Somebody help me here. Two, three-car garages and 
bedrooms that nobody's occupying. <laughs> Four TVs in the house, can't even watch them. You, somebody help me here today. God knows how. And I'm glad that he blesses in the over and above plan too. And y'all quit looking at me like that because if you don't, I'm going to have to prove it to you. He blesses in the over and above plan. Some of y'all was late to church this morning because you couldn't figure out what suit, what clothes, what shoes you were going to wear. He blesses over and above. Don't you know that all you need is bread and water and that would be survivable. But looking at the weight of some of us, we know that God blesses in the over and above plan. Can I get a witness here? Don't you know your hair is enough regardless of how scarce it might be, but God allow you to go to Sally's or wherever you go and you buy you, can I get a witness here? Don't you know God knows how to bless over and above. He He gives us above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works in us. Under him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages. World without end. Amen. Hallelujah. He blesses over and above. And sometimes my over and above is not material. There's some folk that got some material stuff and can't sleep at night. There's some folk that got material stuff and they can't digest their own food. Brother and sister, I'm here to tell you that nothing beats peace of mind. 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 And when you can go to bed at night and go to sleep, Sometimes get a nap in the middle of the day in an uncomfortable chair, lay on the floor in front of the TV. Can I get a witness here? Don't you know it's a blessing just to be able to get a good night's sleep? Don't you know that God can give you peace of mind even in the midst of crazy circumstances? He says, I waited patient. He inclined. He inclined. He brought me up, brought me, uh, he brought me up brought me out and set my feet up on a rock. Look what he did. Verse 3. This and I'm done. He put a new song in my mouth. Even praise unto our God. What he did was that he helped you to see that you didn't get yourself out of the pit. And when you realize that you, the pit was too slimy, there were no rocks in the pit in the first place. God is the one that set them there. He got you out, he set you up, and he hooked you up. And when you get out, you realize that it wasn't because of you. It was because of God who hooked you up. And when he does, you start singing a new song. We used to sing the song, nobody, nobody. Know the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows my sorrow. Can I get a witness here? But he put a new song. Yeah. I have my mansion now. I believe he'll do just what he said. I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. He'll hear and answer prayer. I love the Lord because he heard my cry and pitied every groan. And long as I live in trouble, I'll hasten. He gave me another song. Redeemed, redeemed, I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Here's another one. The potter wants to put me back together again. Here's one. There's something about that name. Can I get a witness? Here's, oh my God. Here's another. He'll do just what he said. He'll put a new song in your mouth. And even if you can't care a tune in the bucket can I get a with you just go ahead and sing your own tune and if you go ahead and audition for the choir and the minister of music says you might want to be an usher don't you know you just go on and usher and sing your song to the Lord because he puts the song in your mouth and it might not sound good to us but God rejoices and is glorified when his children are singing with all of their heart unto him because we realize that God has done what we could could not do. Even praise unto our God. Well, it's time for us to get ready to go get some barbecue, whatever they got. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Oh, but before we go, please remember that praise is unto our God. Please remember that praise is unto our God. And we praise him because we realize that it's he who has done what needed to be do, done because I couldn't do it. It is he who ordered my steps because I couldn't order my steps. I could barely walk. It is he who hooked me up. It is he who brought me out, who set me up. It is he who delivered. It is he who healed. It is he who provided. It is he who protected. And because it's him that did it, ain't no sense of me trying to take credit for it. Look what God did for me. Now look what God did. Look what he did. And everybody in here, you ought to have a look what God did. Somebody help me here. You ought to have a look what God did. And if you keep living and you don't have one, just keep living and want something going to happen and, and the natural circumstances are going to change. And even if it's satanically arranged or it's sovereignly directed or if it's self-inflicted, God will still come in and we know all things work together for good. To them that love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose, we know that God is still at work. He's still at work. He's still at work. I said he's still at work. And since he is, y'all waiting for me to tune up so y'all can praise him. No, y'all not wait for somebody to tune. You all not wait for your, your favorite song. You all not wait for the feeling to be right. You ought to just know that God has been good and that ought to take you into praising him. You ought to know that God has been good and that ought to take you into praising him. You ought not wait for a song. You ought to praise him anyway. You ought not wait for the music. You ought to praise him anyway. You ought not wait for somebody to start hooping him, you ought to praise him anyway. If you got to praise him by yourself, go ahead and praise him by yourself. He's been just that good. He's been just that kind. You ought to praise him all by yourself. I've discovered that God wants to help us. I've discovered that God wants to favor us. Oftentimes, we don't get it. Because we won't ask. I wish everyone in here would develop the Julian Lang syndrome. Y'all like, first of all, who is Julian Lang? Some of y'all know who Julian Lang is. That's my son. Julian Lang had this thing every Christmas time, and Brian can attest, Bettina could t attest, and Paula could attest. Christmas time, about, probably about close to Thanksgiving time. That's when he'd get his Christmas list. Now, he wouldn't just come and tell us what he wanted. He would write down what he wanted. He would write it down. He'd write the price. He'd write the model number. He'd, he'd attach a coupon to it, and he'd tell us what store it was at for this game. I mean, very, very, very detailed. Very, very detailed. And I'd get the list. I mean, by two or three pages, it's scratch on it. It's this, 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 and he want this game for this, da, 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 da. I'm looking at it, I'm like, man, here he go again. <laughs> Throw it on the dresser. About November, after Thanksgiving. About December the 23rd. <laughs> I'm like, what am I going to get Julian? I don't know. I don't I want to get him something. He's like, bing, the list. And I would get the list. And, go, and most of the stuff was at Toys R Us, just know that. He would never, he won't books from Barnes and Noble. Never that, never that. It was always, to, and I would take the list and I would spend three hours in Toys R Us trying to find everything that he wanted. And I had to make sure that the, the, the model number was right for this game and data and all. I had to make sure all was right and all that kind of stuff. He had to, he had the nerve to put the amount and then try to put a total on it. Oh. Very very detailed 
And when it came close to time for Christmas, when I didn't know what to get, I just went and found the detailed list. Lord, I need a job. Pastor, pray for me to get a job. I ain't got to pray. I just drove by Jack in the Box. Big old sign, hiring. No, Pastor, I need a job that's going to pay me about $2,500 a month because I need to pay. You know you're going to be talking about the tithe. I got to pay the tithe. I got to pay the car. No, but rent. Da, 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 da. Okay, let's be specific. What kind of skill set do you have? What hours do you want to work? Where do you want the job to be located at? Okay, let's be specific and ask God for this. Now, if he starts you at Taco Bell, thank God for it, and then he moves you to the state. If he says, I'm going to start you at Taco Bell and send you to, to school so you can get a better skill set so I can get you what you want. He said, but, but at least be specific. Don't just ask God for a man or a woman. Oh, my God, no, please, Jesus. You better have some specificity to that. You want them 6'4", ask for them 6'4". If you want them 5'2", ask for them whatever it is. Be specific and ask God. That's what the word supplication means. It means specific requests. And the word of God says, and God's peace, which passes all understanding, shall guard your heart and mind. He prayed, he prayed, he prayed. And then he recognized that it was God who hooked him up. He said, based on that, I got a new song, and I'm going to praise God. Now, just in case you are at the point where the blessing hasn't showed up. Can I give you a little hint? Based on Psalm 61, praise him like it showed up even though it hasn't. Man, I'm on the internet. I hope that, I know that's not good English, but y'all knew what I was talking about. Praise him as if you have received it even though you don't have it in hand. Translation, you praying for healing, uh, praise him while you're coughing. Translation, you need some money, return the tithe and praise him even though you're broke. Somebody need to get that. Here it is, you're praying, God, I need to do better in school. Praise him and do your homework. Praise him before the blessing gets there. I call that some, some pre-blessing praise. Yeah, the Hawkins picked up and said, don't, let, don't wait till the battle is over. You can shout now. First of all, you know the battle is not yours. It's the Lord's battle. And if it's the Lord's battle, you know the Lord can't lose. Even when it looks like he's losing, he can't lose. Even when it looks like it's gone, he can't lose. Back in the day when he was hot, any team that Jordan played for, that's who you put your money on. That's the way it was. Well, listen what, I got a better bet and I know it's going to pay. Benefits are out of this world. Can I get a witness here? And I've decided, I've decided because of him being so good at God that I'm going to continue to trust him. Good or bad, I'm going to continue to trust him. Up or down, I'm going to continue. Plenty or want, I'm going to continue to trust him. Both broke, busted, and disgusted, money in my pocket, I'm going to continue to trust him. Well or sick, I am going to continue to trust him. Smiling or frowning, I am going to continue to trust him. And I'm going to continue to praise him. He's been good, I'm going to praise him. He's been kind. I'm going to praise him. He brought me from a mighty long way. I'm going to praise and bless his name. If he does it, I'm going to praise him. If he does it, I'm still going to praise him because he's worthy of the praise. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. 
Well, if nothing else, if I may not get what I want. I may not get the car that I want. You know, every time, about every six months, my dream car changes. At first, it was a Bentley. That was about 10 years stretch. And then it's the four-door Porsche. But then I saw another car. It's an electric car. I don't forgot the name of it, but it sure looked pretty. Can I get a witness? Y'all quit looking because y'all want change too. I, was, I might want it all. Can I get a witness? But oh, I'm so glad that a God gives me what I need. He'll supply all of my need according to his riches and glory. And therefore, I'm going to praise him even if he doesn't give it to me. Even if I don't get the Bentley. Even if I don't get the put. Even if I've got to drive that Lexus until I drive the tires off it. I'm still going to drive it in the name of the Lord. And if he takes it and I've got to catch the bus, I'll catch the bus in the name name of the Lord. Still giving him praise. Do you know what it means to catch the bus? That means I can get to where I'm going and don't have to drive. Oh, hallelujah. Can I get a witness here? Oh, I'm going to praise him. But most of all, I'm going to praise him. Because one dark Friday, he hung, he bled, and he died on Golgotha's bloody hill. Oh, yes, he did. Now, a whole lot of folk had died out there. That was the place of capital punishment. That's where they crucified criminals. But on that day, Golgotha, I believe, came Calvary. And it's at the cross of Calvary that I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. And now happy, somebody said it like this, oh, the blood, oh, the blood done sign my name. How do you know the blood? Jesus told me the blood done sign. What can wash away my sin? Hey, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that wakes me wider than snow. No other found I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. That's why you're saved, because of his blood. And somebody said it'll never, it'll never, it'll never, oh, never, it'll never lose its power. It reaches to the highest mountain. And if you're like me, it flows to the lowest valley. And it gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose its power. Is there anybody in here? Thank God for the blood. Are you thankful for the blood? Well, tell God, thank you for the blood. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Because of his blood. I was taken out of the pit of sin. Hallelujah. It don't mean that I'm perfect, but I don't have to worry about the penalty no more. I don't have to worry about hell no more because I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb and he saved me throughout all eternity. I'm sitting in the heavenlies in Christ Jesus. Yes, I am. Not because of me but because of him. So in conclusion, he will do just what he said. Here's an assignment before I go to my seat. The assignment is this. Whatever you're dealing with, whatever you're going through, see what God has to say about it. And then when you find it, begin to pray that prayer. God, um, I'm not broke. I'm just between blessings. <laughs> but God, you said you would supply all my need according to your riches and glory. And so God, I need you to do just what you said. Lord, I'm confused. But you said you'd bind up the brokenhearted. I need you to do just what you said. God, my children are acting not like I raised them. Help me to get the right of correction. Help me to spend time teaching and loving them. And Lord, help them. You said you'll do it. And I'm going to believe you. And I'm going to trust you. 
God, my husband doesn't treat me right. And all my friends say leave. But God, that's not what my heart says. And I don't think that's what your word says. So Lord, touch me. Lord, I'm in an abusive situation. And I don't know what to do. I really want to get a baseball bat and club him a couple of times. But Lord, that might not be what you want me to do. So God, I need you to touch me. I need you to help me. God, my wife is not being what your word says. So help her. God might say, well, you might not be in the husband that you're supposed to be. So God, help her and help me. God, I don't know what to do and where to go. But God, you said that my steps are ordered. Help me walk in your word. Help me walk in your word. Help me walk in your word. Help me to walk in your word. Help me to walk in your word. God, you said you'd supply. God, this church, this ministry, we got a whole lot of needs. And we need you to do something special. So God, do just what you said. And while we're waiting, thank you. <laughs> and while we're anticipating, because the word wait, guess what? It carries the idea. It not only carries the idea of, of standing patiently, but it also carries the idea of expecting. How many of you ever had to catch the bus? So what you do? You go to the bus stop and you wait expecting that bus to come. Somebody help me here. You're, you're waiting. You don't go and sit there and wait saying, well, the bus ain't coming today. No, the schedule says it's supposed to be here at 837. It's 836 and 35 seconds. That bus better be here. Come out of here. Somebody help me here. And you're waiting and you're expecting. And listen here, somebody, you're saying, God bless me, but you're not expecting it. God, you're saying, God help me, but you're not. No, when you ask God, you ought to expect for it to show up. You ought to expect for the way to be made. You ought to expect for the door to be opened. You ought to expect it so that you'll get a job, that you'll go out and put in some application. You ought to expect so much that you're going to get a car, that you'll start pricing what you want and start getting your credit taken care of. You ought to expect what it is that you want. If you want a husband, a good godly husband, you're going to be saying, Lord, Lord, help me to get ready. Go ahead and put your makeup on. Go ahead and can I get a witness? Put some cologne on. Get you a little blush to kind of cup somebody. Help me. Don't y'all make me go there. Listen, you ought to wait expecting. You ought to wait expecting. Lord, send me a godly wife and you acting like a fool. Lord, let me get ready. So that when the, when the blessing comes, I will be ready for the blessing and the blessing will be ready for me. Yeah. Expect it. Expect it. Expect it. You're talking about you want a house. You don't even know what kind of house you want. You don't even want to know what kind of house. I just want a house. Where at? I don't know. Just want a house. What kind? I don't know. I just want a house. You want brick? You want stucco? What do you want? What color do you want? You want a big yard, a little yard? You want acres? What do you want? Expect it. Expect God to do what God. I'm waiting and I'm expecting God to do. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. And he'll do. Just what he said. Give God a hand of praise now. Give God a hand of praise. That's right. Come on now. Give God a hand of praise. Come on, y'all. I didn't say give wide a hand of praise. I said give God a hand of praise. Bless his holy name. He'll do it. 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 Uh, uh, come in now. Come in. Oh, 
Good morning, church. Um, I don't know. I don't know where to start. Um, uh, he just he'll do just what he says. I used to. Uh, I met my wife. Uh, she brought me to Mount Calvary. Uh, I used to rush her. Say, hey, let's get in here. I want to hear this song. Thank God for Mount Calvary. And that's. Yeah, I got excuse me. I'm, I'm nervous. I'm, 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 I just ain't here this morning. I'm just got praise in my heart. Uh, don't know where to tell you guys, but my God, my God, that's all I can say this morning. I, I, family, I just, family, I, I, I thought, you know, my parents taught me go to school, uh, work hard, do these things. It's gonna come. All right. So I set myself up, I went to college, I did what they say to do, I got a job, I, they, things weren't happening like I thought I was supposed to happen, right? So I thought I was going to act a fool on the job, and I'm going to quit. Um, I um, pretty much walked off of a, a, a job because I got, I thought I was going to make my own way. I thought I was going to get uh, my business, I got my business off the ground, oh, I'm going to do this, Donald can handle this, Donald can do this. All right? Open a business. It was okay for four or five years. Open a second business. Both of them failed because Donald said he was going to do it, right? All right. Remember, I acted a fool back on this job that I left, right? So now I got to come crawling back. Interview. They're going to offer me the job. So, oh, Donald going to fix it, right? Oh, Donald, you good enough. You got the experience. You got the college degree. Blah, 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 right? They are, they're going to offer me the job, turned around and said, it got to HR. Someone in HR said, nope, we're not going to hire this guy. Nope. Nope. So almost got the offer. Come back to Mount Calvary, <laughs> praying, leadership in the men's ministry. All these men are standing to say, Donald, just, just keep pushing, keep pushing. So I got a contracted job at the same company. Okay. Remember they say they weren't gonna hire me. Remember Donald acted a fool, right? I won't even embarrass myself and tell you how much of a, a fool I acted, right? <laughs> Pastor just said it, you know, he clears the path. He put somebody that I used to work with eight years back. He was at another company. He brought that person back to this company. I, I saw him in the hallway. He said he had a position. I interviewed. He fought through HR, and he and God said, "Make this man." Okay. Can I tell the other part? Because he didn't tell you that part about. Can I tell it? It's okay. Now, what he didn't tell you was. He got the he got the permanent position and they doubled his salary. (laughs) (laughs) And now unto him who was able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we could ask or thing. I said, he's able. He's able. I said, he's able. Anybody in here know he's able? Anybody in here know he's able? Anybody in here know he's able? Because he'll do just what he said. He will do. Man alive. Bless his holy name. <sighs> all right. It is possible that through all of this, that someone is here who, first of all, don't know the Lord Jesus as a Savior. God sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins, shed his blood that our sins might be washed away. That's where the song comes, what can wash away my sin, nothing but the blood of Jesus. He died on Calvary, but he got up early Sunday morning. 
And your issue may not be a psychological, it may not be a final, it may, a, a fam, but it might be a salvific issue. Which means this, that if you die without knowing Jesus, the Bible says, the Bible says that hell's going to be your home. And then the Bible says death and hell shall be cast into the lake of fire. You mean hell? I thought hell was fire. <laughs> and then hell going to be some more fire? Brother, wait a minute, listen to the word hell. Just the sound of it, I don't even like it. You know what I mean? Well, look, look at this, heaven. You can't even say heaven rough. You know, heaven, <laughs> you know, don't come out. I mean, it's he I mean, heaven, hell. What's, and Jesus says the only way you can make it to heaven is you've got to trust me as Savior. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. That's it. And that's it, too. Any believer in here struggling with something, raise your hand. Y'all better not keep your hand down because everybody in here struggling with something. I don't care how young or how old you are, you struggling with something. You either struggling with what you're doing or struggling with wishing you could do what you used to do. Somebody help me. You struggling with something. I talk to my own. I don't want to run the gamut. Listen there. But the issue is we are covered in the blood of Jesus. We're washed in the blood. We're part of God's family. That's what makes a difference. 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 And, and God can give you a testimony. It may not be his. It may be great. I don't know. But he wants, he wants you to be a part of the family. Have you been to a, a picnic, a family picnic, and, and all the families there, and you see somebody, and everybody's trying to figure out who he is? <laughs> who is this? Cutting Pete. Yeah, Cutting Pete show up. We got a cut and pee. We ain't no cut and pee in this family. <laughs> he just eating, trying to act like he in the family, eating all the food and all that kind of stuff. Nah. <laughs> they try to get the benefits and they're not in the family. And a whole lot of folk come in and do the church house trying to get the benefits and you're not in the family. Now, God is so good that he'll let some of them benefits, he'll let some of them, you know, kind of sprinkle you a little bit. But man, I don't want to be sprinkled with his benefits. I want to be drenched in them. And there's some things that you can't get unless you're a part of the family. And if you want to be a part of the family of God, you want to receive the Lord Jesus by faith, this is a mighty good time to say yes to Jesus. Is there anyone here? I'm not asking if you want to join the church yet. I'll get to that. But if you want to join the family of God by receiving Jesus Christ as your Savior, if that speaks of you, I want you to lift your hand up right now. Don't be ashamed. Don't be scared. Don't be shy. If you are ashamed, scared, and shy, that's all right. Lift it up anyway. God loves you. He wants to save you. He loves you. He wants to bless you. He loves you. He wants to flood you. He loves you. He wants to just, just gush his grace all on you. Any takers in here? You want Jesus. Number two, if you're here and you say, I'm a believer in Jesus Christ, I don't have a church home. I don't have a church home. I'm a believer, but I don't have a church home. But I want to, I, I, I think, I know I need a church home. I don't know what it all means and all of that, but I want to come because I want to begin to learn more about the Lord. I want to have a pastor who's going to teach me and help me learn about the Lord. I want to get close to God's people. Now, some of God's people, all of God's people got issues, but because we're God's people, we all right. You know, you know, you know, God will let you know who the wolves are. <laughs> but God's people, he'll let you know, oh, yeah, they're all right, they're all right. And if you're hearing you say that I'm, I want to, I want to, connect with this church. I believe the Lord is leading me to become a part of this church. If that speaks to you, just raise your hand where you are. Raise your hand where you are. God bless you. God bless you. You want to stand and come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can come that way. Come that way. It doesn't matter. You, just, you can come on. Come on. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on this way. Amen. That is Catherine Fuller. Thanks for coming to the church with me. Amen. Oh, my God. Well, hello. You want to come to the church? That's Justin. That's your mom. Hey, what's your name? I'm going to call him with them, too. Amen. Huh? 
Huh? Eight months? Okay. When she, yeah. <laughs> Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Listen here. Um, somebody else, you say, you know what? They can do it. I can do it too. And that's right. You done brought, you done brought five. Mm, I sure did. I said, but in a month, bring one. She brought five. Like she, <laughs> mm, okay. You going to go back with them? Or you? All right. Come on. Give God a hand of praise now. Mm. If there's someone else, say, yeah. That's how easy it is. Just, I want to be a part of the church. Wait a minute, you got here. That was 80% of the battle. Yeah. Amen, amen. So if you want to come, anybody else, yes, I want to be part of this church. Last, lastly, I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. Don't have a church home, and I'm not sure where to go. Okay? I'm a believer. I don't have a church home. I'm not sure where to go. I don't know if I should join this church or the one down the street or the one down the way, the one closer to my house. I'm a believer. I don't have a church home. Not sure where to go. Could you pray for me? If that speaks of you, just lift your hand and I'll pray for you right where you are. I know I need a church home. Not sure where to go. Just pray for me that the Spirit of God would lead me to a Bible-believing Christian church. If that's your prayer, just lift your hand and I'll pray for you where you are. Amen. God bless you. I see your hand. You can put it down. Someone else. I, I'm a believer. I don't have a church home. I know I need one. I'm not... I'm the, you can, you can go down Real Linda and Al Altos, and you'll see about 10 churches. Most of them good churches. Not the issue. You can go to South there and find a lot of good churches. There's good churches all over the place. But, Lord, I want to be the one and the one where you want me to be, where I'm assigned to that pastor or this pastor and that membership where my gifts can be utilized, where I can grow, where I can develop. And if that's your desire for prayer for that, just lift your hand where you are. God bless you. I see your hand. You can put it down now. I'm going to pray two things. Number one, I'm going to pray and be honest with you. I'm going to pray that God would lead you to a Bible-believing Christian church where you can be fed the gospel of Jesus Christ, the word of God, where you can be in fellowship with brothers and sisters in Christ, where you have a pastor, the man of God, to watch over your soul. The second part of that prayer is this, is if it's God's will that you become a part of this church, I'm going to pray that God would guide you and direct you. That's fair enough. Now, I need to let you know that I'm going to kind of favor, you know, my prayer for you coming to this church. You know, y'all, I'm being honest with you, okay? I'm being honest with you. But I'm going to pray that God would guide you. Let's bow. Let's pray. God, in Jesus' name, again, we bless you and thank you for this day and opportunity. We thank you for those who have gone back with the counselors. We pray that you would make uh, the information that is being presented clear so that they would understand. We're praying now for those hands that were raised who need a church home, not sure where to go, praying for your guidance and your direction. God, we pray that you would help them, lead them to a Bible-believing Christian fellowship. May or may not be Baptist, may or may not be Methodist, may or may not be Church of God in Christ, we don't know, but praying that you would lead them to a Bible-believing Christian church where the Word of God is being taught, where Jesus is the center of attraction, where they can be in fellowship with brothers and sisters so they can pray together, so that they can grow together. We pray your blessings now. And then, God, if it is your will, because it is show my desire, but if it is your will that they become a part of this church, I pray that you would move on them. You might do it today. You might do it next week. But, God, I pray that you would move on them so that, God, they'll become a part of this church if this is the place you have assigned, if I am the pastor that you have assigned. And if they join here, we'll say thank you. If they join the, uh, the Church of God in Christ Church down the street, we'll say thank you. If they join the non-denominational church on the other side of town, closer to their houses, wherever it is, God, we'll say thank you and we'll give your name glory, we'll give your name honor, and we'll give your name praise. In the name of he who was in, is and is to come, even Jesus the Christ we pray, and everyone in agreement said amen. amen. Come on, let's give God a big hand of praise right now. Hallelujah. And so if maybe he's moving right now, and if you feel led of the Spirit of God to come and be a part of this church, we invite you and welcome you to come at this time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Bless his holy name. Come on, let's give God a big hand of praise. Hallelujah. All right, all right. Guess what time it is? It is time to return the Lord's tithe and offering. I said it is time to return the Lord's tithe and offering. Now, man, don't come up here all moping and stuff. You better smile, man. Show them teeth. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm-hmm. Show them. God has been good to you. Amen. It is time to return the Lord's tithe and offering. Uh, the mission is going to be coming because they are in charge on the day, and so they're coming, and we're going to uh, give over to them as they give leadership. That means you all can, you 